Utah's Great Salt Lake is shrinking, and its receding waters have revealed a deadly secret. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Time Bomb. This week, we're talking about Utah's famous Great Salt Lake. But before I get started, please hit that subscribe and like button. I really value your support. The Great Salt Lake in Utah is the largest saltwater lake in the Western Hemisphere. It's also home to a variety of unique wildlife. It's an important economic driver for the state of Utah. That lake supports a number of industries, including tourism, recreation, and mineral extraction. However, the Great Salt Lake is in danger. Due to various reasons, the lake has shrunk by over 60% since the 1980s. This has exposed thousands of square miles of lake bed, which is contaminated with a variety of toxic metals and compounds. When the lake bed is exposed to the wind, it can create dust storms that carry these toxic materials into the air. This can have a serious impact on the health of people living near the lake, particularly those with respiratory problems. Three rivers, the Bear, Weber, and Jordan, all flow into the Great Salt Lake. But the Great Salt Lake is a terminal lake, meaning it has no outlet to the ocean. This means the water level of the lake is dependent on the amount of water that flows into it and the amount of water that is lost through evaporation. In recent decades, the water level of the Great Salt Lake has been decreasing due to a combination of factors, including water diversion. Water has been diverted away from the Great Salt Lake's tributaries for use in agriculture, industry, and municipal water supplies. Overuse. As the population and economy of the Salt Lake City area grows, so does its demand for water. And then we have bad government policy. It's actually the absence of policy that allows water to be diverted away from the lake. It's government's failure to invest in water conservation. And most of all, it's their lack of planning that has led to these low water levels. Listen to this comment from Utah Senator Mitt Romney when he was asked about the Great Salt Lake and the low water situation. How much can we do through conservation? I believe a lot. I presume a lot. I hope conservation alone will get the job done. Uh, if, if not, why, we'll have to look at some of the more e extreme options. So we know there is less water flowing into the Great Salt Lake, but there is also the water leaving the lake. As I said before, the Great Salt Lake is a terminal lake, meaning it has no outflow. However, we still have evaporation. The rate of evaporation at the Great Salt Lake has been increasing, and there's a number of factors that contribute to this. Higher temperatures, drought, increased urbanization, and the size of the lake. All of these factors make temperatures higher and therefore increase the evaporation rate and loss of water from the Great Salt Lake. One of the things that I love about the Great Salt Lake is that the United States Geological Survey has been tracking the water level since 1875. This makes the Great Salt Lake one of the longest monitored lakes in the world. Well, we don't need to look that far back in history to see the record low water levels. The lowest recorded water level at the Great Salt Lake was 4,190 feet, 2 inches, and that was recorded on October 18th of 2021. This was the first time in recorded history that the lake's water level had fallen below 4,191 feet. The lake's water level continued to decline into 2022, reaching a new record low of 4,188 and a half feet on November 23rd, 2022. Since that low point, the water level has recovered and rose to a peak of 4,194 feet in June before starting to decline again. The current water level is just above 4,192 feet and will most likely continue to decline for the remainder of the year. Like I said before, the lake has three major tributaries, the Jordan, Weber, and Bear Rivers. Together, they deposit around 1.1 million tons of minerals in the lake every year. As the Great Salt Lake shrinks, the salinity level, or the amount of salt in the water, increases. 
The typical grams per liter of salinity for the Great Salt Lake is somewhere between 120 and 160 grams per liter. This is about three to four times saltier than the ocean, which has an average salinity level of 35 grams per liter. However, the salinity level at the Great Salt Lake varies depending on the location and the time of year. The north arm of the lake is generally saltier than the south arm of the lake, and the salinity of both arms tends to increase during the summer months. In recent years, the salinity of the Great Salt Lake has been increasing due to the declining water level. This is because the salt is becoming more concentrated as the water evaporates. Recent testing found the salinity level had risen to well over 200 grams per liter. That's over five times saltier than ocean water. A shrinking lake means a growing exposed lake bed. And that lake bed contains a variety of toxic metals and compounds, including arsenic, a known carcinogen, selenium, an essential nutrient, yes, but too much can be toxic, mercury, a neurotoxin that leads to brain damage, and lead, also a neurotoxin that can cause a variety of other health issues. This toxic air is a serious public health threat. Exposure to the toxic metals and compounds in the dust can cause a variety of health problems. You get the picture, right? This stuff is bad. You do not want it in the air you breathe. When I talk about the Great Salt Lake shrinking, I'm talking about the size of the lake over the last few decades. But the Great Salt Lake was once part of a much larger prehistoric lake known as Bonneville. Lake Bonneville existed during the last ice age and covered much of present-day Utah and parts of its neighboring states, including Idaho and Nevada. It was one of the largest lakes in North America at the time. Here we can see just how big Lake Bonneville was compared to the Great Salt Lake. Over thousands of years, Lake Bonneville gradually dried up due to changing climate conditions and a significant reduction in precipitation. That drying process left behind several smaller lakes, with the Great Salt Lake being the largest among them. Now maybe the Great Salt Lake is destined to dry up just like Bonneville. Or maybe they will find a way to finally stop the water levels from declining. I mean, the choice is simple. You either deal with the Great Salt Lake's water level, or you deal with the toxic air situation. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments section. There's a lot to digest here, and there's probably a lot of good ideas. I'd like to hear all of them, and I'll do my best to respond. Well, that's it for this week. As always, thank you for watching. Please check out some of my other videos, and please consider subscribing to my channel. I really value your support.